Modern society is changing so fast due to rapid industrialization and technological development. These changes and advancements had made our lives more convenient, but on the other hand, they are causing severe environmental problems. One of the most common facts is the increase in carbon dioxide caused by global warming. Over the past few decades, we have used fossil fuels, burned them, and emitted carbon, carbon dioxide into the atmosphere excessively. I'd like to ask, did you know that carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is making our ocean sick? No. <laughs> <laughs> the oceans cover 71% of our planet and provide air, marine life, and our food source. They absorb 25% of CO2 we emit. With our ocean, Earth's climate and weather patterns would drastically change, ultimately leading to an uninhabitable planet. Unfortunately, as decades go by and carbon dioxide emissions rise, our ocean loses its self-purification system. When CO2 reacts with the water, it forms an unstable molecule called carbonic acid. This becomes stable by releasing a hydrogen ion. Although it doesn't immediately make oceans highly acidic, the ocean's pH levels has been progressively shifting toward acidity since the onset of industrialization. Ocean acidification is defined as the reduction in pH level of the ocean over an extended period. Prior to the era of industrialization, the ocean's pH level rested at 8.2. However, the pH level now dropped at 0.1 units. You might think, is it a big deal? But the pH scale is a logarithmic scale, which means even small number changes can actually make a big difference in reality. The graph shows the pH balance of the ocean, and this definitely shows that the Earth is getting into trouble fast. Hydrogen ions bends troubles. Marine organisms need a plentiful supply of calcium and carbonate to form a strong structure. However, carbonate binds more easily with hydrogen ions than with calcium. Marine organisms with external skeletons such as plankton, mollusks, and crustaceans face significant challenges due to the shortage of carbonate ions that is needed for their skeletal structure. So, although the oceans are still to swim in for us, they may not be so safe for many of its permanent residents. That's why we came up with some ideas to ease or even stop the ocean acidification. We had two ways. The first solution was to induce neutralization by pouring basic substance into seawater. The second one was to get the second one was to get rid of hydrogen ions from seawater. The first method is a popular one, but has the fatal side effect of causing basic hydration of the ocean. So we try to find ideas related to the second approach. We have begun to seek the substance that can remove hydrogen ions. And we found Pseudonocardia orthotrophica. It is also called hydrogen bacteria, since this is the hydrogen. hydrogen. It converts hydrogen ions into water in the process of its metabolism. We secondly sought a substance that allows capsule to operate only in acidified environments and learned about a substance called propolene. It is extracted from the pollen and decomposed quickly in an acid environment. We first extracted the spropolenin and confirmed the efficacy of spropolenin and pseudonocardia orthotrophica by checking the pH level of the simple ocean we made. We caught the gelatin capsule with spropolenin and injected the bacteria with its active substance inside, inside the capsule. And that's how we got our final output. The wrapped one is the spropolenin we extracted. And the, right, and, the, and the right one is the final capsule we made. It is very feasible to our capsule as an effective ocean acidification reduction system. This is an even safer and more effective way than conventional solution to reduce ocean acidification. 
Ocean acidification is the first thing that we should study to build smart cities in the ocean and revitalize the economy using marine resources. The ocean provides half of the oxygen we breathe, they moderate our climate, and they provide jobs, medicines, and foods, including 20% of protein to feed the entire world population. Nevertheless, humans betray the ocean. Ocean acidification, bleaching of coral reefs, and proliferation of marine garbage. These are man-made problems. Therefore, it is humans that have a responsibility of addressing this problem. And solving the problem of ocean acidification will bring about numerous positive effects. We can eliminate all causes of problems, including shear formation, by restoring the ocean to its natural state. The restored ocean will not only preserve the ecosystem of marine life, but also effectively carry out its essential roles, such as absorbing carbon dioxide. As a result, it will also contribute to protect the corrosion of marine smart city buildings, including the coastline. The ocean's purification abilities will help eliminate underwater pollutants, thus advancing the city's progress towards its smart implementation goals. We need to face the serious of our serious reality of our ocean and take to take action to preserve the health of our plant, planet. In order to continue this effort, it's essential to create informative materials about ocean acidification, ensuring people can easily grasp this issue. Additionally, generating ongoing research outcomes with attract will more scientists and engineers to engage in this field. We have to contribute to solving the problem by introducing a new concept for tackling ocean acidification through the use of hydrogen bacteria and sporoplane. If we come together and pay attention to this problem as global citizens and try to solve it, our future smart city will become even more beautiful. Thank you for listening.